Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 Sub Zero vs. Shao Kahn 2 pack. This is the fifth variation of Sub Zero they released and the third Shao Kahn. I'm all in for these Mortal Kombat figures. I love the paint variations. I think it's really fun to collect them all. This Sub Zero looks pretty cool. He's in sort of a green and white sort of clothing. And then Shao Kahn here, he's in a sort of silver paint decor. So let's take a look at the packaging here. As you can see at the bottom, Sub-Zero, Mortal Kombat 11 versus Shao Kahn. Here they are in the package. Looks like Shao Kahn has a spear instead of his signature hammer. And then Sub-Zero has his two axes at the top. McFarlane toys. One side of the package, you can see Shao Kahn, Mortal Kombat 11. Other side, both of them. On the back, here they are in a pretty cool fighting pose. I may try to replicate that later. And at the bottom, there's a bunch of credits and there is a barcode in case that helps anybody. So with no further ado, let's open them up. All right, now that we have these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. In this video, we're gonna take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll check out their accessories, height and articulation, We'll compare with all the other variations of Mortal Kombat figures, check out the entire McFarlane Mortal Kombat collection, and check out these figures next to some other figures from various action figure lines to see how they fit in both scale and style wise, in case you want to mix them. Hope you enjoy! Both these figures come with display stands. Sub-Zero has two axes, and Shao Kahn has a spear. Let's start off by looking at Sub-Zero. So here's Sub-Zero. He's in a green and brown paint scheme. He's got two axes and a display stand. Let's take a look at him. Up close, he's got that mask on his face, sort of headband coming out. It looks pretty cool. He's got pretty dark skin on this figure. Got some white on the front, brown, and then sort of an olive green on his outfit. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Color scheme's pretty different. Definitely different than the traditional blue Sub-Zero but it looks pretty good. And just a closer look at his face and mask. Now let's check out his accessories, and let's start off with the boring stuff. He's got this display stand. It's a typical McFarland stand. Black perfect circle. It says Mortal Kombat at the bottom. It's one peg for the pickles on his feet. It's very thin, very basic. Now let's look at his axes. They're pretty much exactly the same. They're both made of a semi-transparent material. Kind of yellow-green at the top, and it goes to white at the bottom. Here are all the different variations of his axe accessory that the different Sub-Zeros have come with. Here's Sub-Zero holding the axes. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height from bottom to the top of his head. He's standing at about 7.0 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 18 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side, but kind of bounces back into place. His articulation at the base of the neck here, not at the top of the neck, bottom of the head like usual. Go up and down about that far. Can't really tilt very much from one side to the other. Shoulders, a ball joint, goes at more than 90 degrees up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area, increasing the range of motion. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, only going about this far. His wrist here, it's got a ball in it. Can rotate, and it's hinged as well. Torso seems to be one solid piece. Ball joint is waist, rotate around, go forward and back. Legs, go about this far. Not ball joint, but a similar type concept. Rotation, pretty minimal. Forward about that far, back, not too much. He does have rotation above the knee. Double jointed knees, go back about that far. Then his ankle here, it's got a ball in it, goes forward and back, can rotate, tilt and rock. And he has toe articulation. Here's his new Scorpion. This is the original standard blue Scorpion release. And here are all five variations of Sub-Zero. Now let's take a look at Shao Kahn. This guy is large, he's a giant, very tall. He comes with a display stand and a spear. 
So let's take a look at him. He's got his signature helmet, the large horns, the fangs on the front, but this one's redone in a silver and yellow paint job. You can see the back of his helmet, kind of samurai style. Nice bit of sculpting detail there. He's got two shoulder pads, they're large, they're different. He's got this part going down on the arm, not here. Probably going to obstruct some of the articulation. You can see the different texturing on the different parts. His skin, very unique looking. Double jointed elbows. Double jointed knees. Kind of a loincloth type thing. Spikes on his shins, on his feet. Very impressive guy. He's got a lot of presence to him. And then a closer look at his face and helmet to see some of the details we might have missed earlier. Now let's take a look at his accessories. He's got the same McFarlane display stand that Sub-Zero had. And he also comes with a spear. It's a golden spear. It's got the silver tip here. Nice sculpting detail in some parts. A little bit more basic than the other weapon the standard Shao Kahn came with. Here's a spear next to the other two Shao Kahn's accessories. Here's Shao Kahn holding the spear. He can hold it with either one hand or with two. And here's this Shao Kahn holding the Wrath Hammer the previous Shao Kahn came with. Now let's check out his height from bottom to the top of his head. He's standing at about 7.9 inches tall, which can translate to about 20 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the horns, about 8.5 inches tall. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. Can't look up and down about that far. Can't tilt his head from one side to the other, giving a good amount of personality. Shoulders on a ball joint. And I'll show you on this one. Goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have this thing that would obstruct his articulation, but you can sort of slide it, it's soft, on top, and then you can put his arm up. Not perfect, but at least it does allow you to give some articulation there. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area, increasing the range of motion there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows below that. His wrist here, it has a ball in it kind of rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. He's got ball joint in his torso, rotate around, go forward and back. Ball joint in his waist, also rotate around and go forward and back, giving him a pretty good range of motion in his torso. Legs, go out about this far, not a ball joint but a similar type concept. Rotation, pretty minimal. Go forward, about that far, not too much. Back perhaps not at all. Double jointed knees below that. Go all the way back. Then his ankle here has a ball in it. Go forward and back. Can rotate, can tilt and rock. And there's torque articulation. Here's this silver and yellow repaint Shao Kahn next to the original gold and red version. And here would be all three variations of Shao Kahn they've made. Here's some Zero fighting Shao Kahn. Round one, fight! Now let's check them out next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other McFarlane Mortal Kombat figures. Here they are, next to the only other Mortal Kombat 2 pack McFarlane has made. That pack was Scorpion vs. Raiden. Here they are, next to the most recently released wave. This wave consisted of Noob, Cybot, and Cabal, and a bunch of variations. Then, with the previous assortment, this assortment included Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, Shao Kahn, and Scorpion. And here, with a couple of recently released Mortal Kombat 11 spawn paint variations. Here's the entire McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 collection. I count a total of 31 figures. Looking forward to the next assortment that comes out before the year ends. That assortment is going to have Kotal Khan, the Joker, a repaint of Shao Kahn, a repaint of Liu Kang, and I believe there's going to be a bloody version of Joker and Kotal Khan as well. In addition to that, there's going to be an armored spawn variation coming out as well. Now let's check them out next to some other action figures from different various companies to see how they fit in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. 
Since they're some McFarlane figures, they're typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines we collect, and we're probably smaller. Here they are with some of their McFarlane Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarlane Toys, all 7 inch scale, and these guys are all from different various video game properties. Then, next is some more McFarlane Toys. And now, Next is some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here he is. Next is some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, next is some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, next is some NECA figures. Then, next is some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, next is some Jazzwares AEW wrestling figures. And here they are. Next is some Mezco 112 cloth soft goods action figures. Then, next is some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures. And here, next is some Mafex figures. Then, next is some Hasbro, Marvel Legends. And here they are, next is some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, next is some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Overall, these are some pretty cool figures. Their sculpt and paint job are excellent, I don't see any issues there. Their articulation is pretty good. But the Mortal Kombat articulation is a little bit inferior to their DC Multiverse Lines articulation. These guys are repaints, but they're not even my favorite repaint of either one of the characters. I can think of at least two Sub-Zero figures that I prefer over this one, and I definitely prefer the regular Shao Kahn to this guy. Their accessories are pretty cool. I like the fact that Shao Kahn comes with a spear. If I didn't have the other Shao Kahn, I'd be disappointed in it didn't have his Wrath Hammer. But the fact that I have the original, I'm happy this guy brings something new to the table. If I were to rate these guys, I'm probably going to give them like a 6.5 out of 10. They're nice, but just a little more of the same, and not even a better version of a repaint. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.